Hey everyone, Brian Beeler here with Storage Review. I've got Kevin O'Brien here alongside of me, and we've got a special guest we're going to bring in here in just a minute. Before we get too far though, let's get into the product and start uh, with that. So GTEC, which is a WD brand, has a new portable SSD with a focus on security. And this is part of their Armor Lock portfolio, and this is the first product that's a portable SSD. You've brought something with us, Kevin. Yeah, what so external uh, hard drives and SSDs, traditionally, when you talk security, just have like the little beep, 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 keypad The digit pad, right? Yeah. Or we see biometrics sometimes. Yeah, sometimes fingerprint readers. But those both have limitations in terms of how portable that that key is, right? And how easy it is to share data. So what GTEC's figuring with this particular product is that by having a better, easier to use security platform via mobile app, that that will help make the sharing of data securely even easier. Yeah. Because they've seen uh, many use cases where you'll have a keypad like this and on the back, what do you have? Um, well, you, you no. don't have the number written down, but some people do. Well, no, because I remember it's just one one two two three three four four. <laughs> so there's there's Kevin's ATM code if uh, if you need access to that. Uh, but let's take a look at the uh, the product itself. So they've got a nice little packaging deal. Our review unit's a two terabyte unit. Uh, they've gone with the gold design ID for the heatsink, and we've looked at the GT GTEC family in the past. They use like the that teal blue for most of their things that are the true, you know, more performance oriented uh, SSDs or at least non, non secure like this. Uh, but from a design standpoint, Kevin, what do you make of their heatsink design? I think you're generally in favor of the way they do that from a design standpoint. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I'm not really sure it's needed or it's fully functional. It's just more on the uh, look side, but uh, it does give it a fairly rugged appearance. And so there's two there's two key aspects to this. We've got the performance profile, and we'll get to that here in a second. And then we've got the app, uh, which will do a, a deep a deep view on that of how you pair the drive and how you go through the application. And then we've got the use cases. And so GTEC was big on M&E for these use cases. And to talk a little bit about that, we could think of no one better than our own M&E expert, Vincent. Vincent, thanks for joining us from New York. How are you? Good, how's it going? Hey, we're doing well. So you help us out a lot on all of these sort of Creative Pro use cases. And the, the M&E and Creative Pro monikers get sort of bandied about by uh, laptop guys, storage guys, all sorts of things. Uh, but this one's pretty unique because we do know that there's a lot of data portability issues when you're on set and recording a a movie or a commercial or whatever, and that these things get shipped around. So the security thing seems like an angle that makes sense in your space. What do you what do you think about that? Yeah, and especially with like the model you have there with the two terabyte one for you know one or two day commercial gigs where I don't need a ton of storage. Two terabytes, you know, with at a thousand megs a second is perfect for that kind of shoot. Um, and the main way we actually get footage around, you know, especially in New York City, is actually just through couriers. Um, you know, sending two terabytes a couple blocks to a post house is going to be faster than any internet connection you have. Um, so being able to have that storage be secure is is definitely helpful for things like documentaries, where say if an interviewee uh, needs their identity kept anonymous, or like a, if you're filming a big time TV show where or a movie where the end has a huge spoiler that you don't want to get leaked out, things like that are great to keep secure. Well, that's an interesting angle because this, well, how many times have we seen spoilers for a lot of the big movies, the superhero movies, right, yeah. where that comes out and 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 can ruin the uh, the surprise, I guess, for for people that are that are watching. So, if you don't use a secure device, what are your other options? Is it just pretty much standard uh, data shipping around and, and hoping for the best? I mean, I I just struggle to understand a little bit about how much the industry is willing to invest from a security standpoint and if and if they're real serious about that. Uh, from a price point, um, this particular drive is not priced, you know, the premium for the security is not insanely above what a normal, you know, two terabyte NVMe portable SSD would be. Uh, so for some producers where it's super critical and they need to transfer the data securely uh, from location to location, um, 
that it's it's worth it. You know, you know they have insurance and stuff for all this, but it's more of a reputation thing, right? Like a company is going to be very upset if the production company they hire lost their footage and it got out into the public. <laughs> yeah, it um, seems, seems like that could be a problem. Yeah, yeah. So having that is definitely helpful. That's good and good perspective. And performance is part of that because as Vince is saying, shipping these things around in a place like Manhattan where there's a high density, it's much faster uh, to, to put it in a courier's hands and move two or four. Is that from sneaker net? Yes, that is a sneaker net. Yes. Uh, but also, you know, so performance is a little bit of the story. So let's take a quick peek at that. Yeah, so on the performance side, it, it performed pretty well. Um, with uh, single-threaded operations, we were in the uh, low 800 megs a second uh, read and around 750 uh, write. Uh, when we bumped that to a uh, four-thread operation, uh, it was like 1,000 uh, megs a second and uh, about 960 megs a second write. So it's for moving data on and off, you're basically saturating the interface. And this is USB 3.2? Uh, right USB 3.2 Gen 2, Gen 2 not right. by 2 because that would give you up to 2 gig a second. Right. And so, but this is a part of the new standard for portable SSDs where we're going to see about a gig a second in and out of these things. Yeah. Okay. So from the performance profile, it looks pretty good. Use cases make sense. But the real sweet spot with this is the app that's included. So let's switch to that view and I'll give you a walkthrough about how you pair the drive and, and what the app looks like. So when we plug the device into, as you can see, a MacBook Air there, there's a little yellow light on the lock that lights up. And from the app side, if you scan the bottom of the drive, there's a little QR code there. And there's a number of options that you can activate. Request access, use the recovery key if something's gone wrong and you need to, uh, uh, to set that up, or erase and set up as new. So we'll set up a new one and you can change the name, change the color. Now the color identifier is, is apparently useful in these workflows to color code the type of drive it is. It would have been really cool if there was a little LED that lit up on the, uh, on the drive itself to, to affirm that color ID. Yeah. Uh, but this is Gen 1 and, and they don't have that. Uh, you can also enable location tracking, so that'll work a lot like AirPod Pro. You know, when you see and, and find my on your iOS device, it'll show the last known location. We can enable FaceTime user authentication, auto firmware updates, and then it goes ahead and it'll format the drive. So this is uh, this is where you start with the drive. It's funny though because. Um, like all other portable drives, I just plugged it in and expected it to work and it, Mac doesn't see it in its locked state. Yeah. And here's the important part. You'll want to save this. This is your recovery key in case you need to have access to the drive. You could take a photo of it. That's not super secure. Best Post on Twitter. Usually you know, that way you'll be able to be sure to find it. Uh, I didn't actually save the key, but I'll confirm and we are all set up. Now from here, the drive is still locked. When I hit the button, it'll use Face ID to authenticate and it'll go ahead and take a few seconds. And then, oh, there, uh, we go. there we go, just like that. Now from here, we've got access to a number of settings, most of those that we just set up. Um, so you can edit those, change the colors, whatever you want to do uh, at any time. One of the important things though is the sharing bit. So each app is going to have, or app user is going to have a user ID. So this is something that you could share uh, with the owner of the drive to get access. So if I want to send it to Vince, Vince can send me the code and I can add him to the uh, to the record. And you can do that. And you can do that by scanning the QR code or you can manually enter it in. Um, as we said, it's got location tracking, so it's got a pretty decent lock not quite our real address, but close enough in the event that you lost it. Uh, and you can manage multiple drives, of course, if you had eight or 10 of these things, you would just add them all in there. And if you're a, pr a practitioner uh, that's touching a lot of these, like the edit houses um, that Vince was referring to, you, know, you might have you know, a couple dozen in here, just depending on uh, who's using it. So overall, the app's pretty strong. It's um, it's a free app. You can there's a little share the app thing here to be able to distribute the useful. app link, and overall it's really easy to use. And 
when we think about these drives, they always carry a price premium on them. And in this case, it's not huge though for a two terabyte drive. And to Vince's point too, like that's an important thing in terms of the usability and making sure that uh, uh, it, once you have access to these security features that you actually use them rather than having something that's a little more cumbersome like the digit pad where people put yeah, a post-it on the back of it. Bypassing in some way. Yeah. So overall, a great little SSD. The security is great. The, um, uh, the build's really strong on this thing. Uh, it doesn't have FIPS. It doesn't have some of the more advanced data security features, but for the intended audience, it does really well. So thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll be back soon with another video.